We all know about ChatGPT nowadays, you give it any prompt and it will try to answer it. Apparently you can do some pretty cool stuff with it, like code entire websites or make $273.97 per day. But as an avid puzzle enthusiast, what I want to look at today is how well it can solve puzzles, starting from some of the easiest and working our way up to the hardest problems ever conjured up by mankind. We'll start with this one. We have a one-story yellow house. What color are its stairs? Can I figure this one out? There are no stairs in a one-story house. It got it. Amazing. What about this? How can a man die of old age on his 25th birthday? It's not possible, the bot says. That's quite a thorough explanation on the causes of death by old age, but unfortunately, I believe it has missed the mark. Perhaps I can incite a better answer by bringing up eight years myself. And it looks like the AI simply does not understand the human, jokey concept of those born on leap years only having a birthday once every four years. Right, that was a good warm-up. We can now go to the real puzzles graciously provided by Jane Street, the sponsor of this. Just kidding. But this is a quantitative trading firm famous for its competitive pay and its many alumni who have gone off and started many successful businesses themselves. But more importantly, as a puzzle enthusiast, they have a famous monthly puzzles website. Many of these puzzles have images, making it hard to transcribe for the robot to consume. Fortunately, I have found a few that are text only that I can ask verbatim. We start with the hidden warning, where a fairy of Puzzle Forest gives us a few clues for finding an 11 letter word. I think the AI's thought process may be more interesting if we look at the answer first. So each of these clues corresponds to a word, and the key here is that the answers sound like the letters of the alphabet when read aloud. The few extra sounds here give us the answer of bridge troll. For example, if we read baby seed eerie effigy, it sounds kind of like A B C D E F G. However, stuff like the R in Eerie does not occur in EF, and the I in Effigy does not occur in FG, and so on. I have no idea how anyone could possibly come up with the answer to this. You'd have to be some kind of linguistic savant. Anyways, if the bot actually answers this, Jane Street's puzzle team is going to be in huge trouble. Fortunately though, uh, it doesn't seem to be doing very well. It thinks the answer is Signo, which is not 11 letters long. So after correcting the bot, uh, it gave me another answer, Consideration, which is also not 11 letters long. So I just told it each clue corresponds to a word, uh, and then it just basically rearranged my input parameters, and overall just did a pretty terrible job. I realized at this point that I just need to tell it that these are crossword clues. So now it's getting somewhere. We can compare and see if it gets any of them right. We have Eerie for Creepy. Uh, we're getting Chai for Spiced Brew. It's got Opie for Boy on The Andy Griffith Show. And it's got You've Got Mail. And now it's going to use this information to generate a nonsensical phrase and not even try to give me an 11 letter answer. Mm. I was... I've pretty much given up at this point. I'm just giving the bot all of the words and asking it to remove the 11 most non-alphabetic sounding letters. Uh, it didn't get it, obviously. I don't think we're going to get anywhere here, so let's just go to the next problem. Welcome to Robot Tug of War. We have two robots, each capable of pulling a random distance between 0 to 1 units in opposite directions each turn. First one and a half wins. Perhaps a visualization may serve us better. We have two robots here. Blue Robot 1 pulls a solid 0.4, and our Red Robot 2 counters with a negative 0.6. Finally, Robot 1 takes it home and wins it with a huge 0.8, passing the halfway point. Robot 2 would win if it passes negative half. So why does the Robot 1 have an advantage? Well, going first guarantees you have an over 50% chance of winning, since you have a 50% chance of winning outright on the first move. So our objective is to find the starting position that makes the matchup a 50-50. So first, the bot suggested using simulations and binary search. Essentially, we will simulate the game to see what the win rate for each player is at the midpoint of the search range and cut the search range in half each time, depending on who has a higher chance of winning. Here's the textual explanation. Anyways, this was a fine answer, but it couldn't simulate it itself, and the solution to the puzzle did have a mathematical solution, so I figured might as well try, so I asked it to find the solution using pure math. So the expected position of the marker after the first robot pulls is indeed one half. This checks out. The average of 0 and 1 is half. 
The expected value of the position of the market after the second robot pulls is also one half. This makes absolutely no sense as robot two will be pulling uh, greater than zero in the other direction. Safe to say whatever solution it comes up with at this point will be completely wrong. Uh, it gave me half, which means robot one instantly wins. I wanted to give it another chance, so I asked if it was sure. It provided a revised answer of zero, which we know is also wrong since this is just the initial premise of the puzzle. Also taking the diff of the two responses, there is literally zero difference in any of the logic, but it just claimed the answer is zero this time. It's worth noting that it's able to do this because the initial position equation, if you simplify it, you can see is always true no matter what value you pass in, so any real number will, will solve it. I tried to give it some other hints, but it kept coming up with the solution of half. Uh, at this point, I just slapped in the initial equations to solve for in the actual solution to see what it does. Uh, lo and behold, it finally gave me the answer again, and that is half. So for single cross, we need to find a segment of length D that maximizes the probability of intersecting one line on a checkerboard. Let's take a look. Here we can see a few segments that intersect one line, but what is the optimal length? So the AI actually got the correct answer for the length of the line segment, and that is one. The work seems legit. The actual solution had to solve an optimization problem, but the bot is just too smart for that, I guess. That's fine, but let's take a look at how it got the one-fourth number since it didn't really explain its thought process there. Right, so it actually looks at these four cases. I think it believes that since each end of the segment either lies on a line or it doesn't, it's a 50-50 for either one to occur. So all of these scenarios here have the same probability. This is definitely big brain logic right here. Uh, I wanted to see if the AI properly understood the question, so I reworded it more concisely. This time it didn't give me one fourth, it just said the answer was very small. I asked it to give me an exact number, but apparently it is now impossible to calculate this. Uh, I'd have to agree, honestly, it seems pretty impossible to me. It gave me the code to estimate the answer though, so I'll give it a run this time. Looks like it forgot to import a module, let's just quickly fix that and run the code now, and I get zero. So I asked it to fix the code, and it intersects exactly one line method was broken, which is understandable. The method it came up with previously is probably the worst code I've ever seen in my entire life. This new one is much more concise and readable, let's give it a spin. I'm getting a new number, but it's too low. I'm looking for 2 over pi, or around 0.6. I can see why this method doesn't work though. It only counts something as an intersection when it passes the x or y axis at the origin, as you can see by the comparison to 0. Give it another try, and it is giving me the exact same code again. Let me be more specific. I'm going to give it a test case, the exact input and output I'm supposed to get, and this time it should be able to give me a better answer. Third time's the charm, uh, I expect it to work perfectly this time, and it's giving me zero. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna ask the bot to fix it again. Too many requests in one hour. Okay, so I did some coding off camera to fix this one function. We really only need to check whether a whole number is contained in either the X or Y ranges, upping the number of samples. We get the answer up to four significant digits. I will count this as a win for the AI since it kind of wrote most of the code. In conclusion, ChatGPT is not yet ready to take over the competitive puzzle solving scene, but it has a fair bit of potential. I give it a 2 out of 5.